Hello everybody, Manix here. Got a knife review for you right here, right now. Man, do I love this thing. The CJRB Caldera. Sporting the AR RPM9 steel. G10 handle scales, stainless steel liners that are skeletonized. Big ol' Santoku-esque blade right here. It is modified. Very modern. Cool looking. Opening hole. Ball bearing track. Flipper. Tip up carry. Swappable to the left side. A loop over pocket clip. I think it's a really cool looking blade. I love this. What I'm assuming is an aluminum anodized red backspace right there. It's, it's just so sweet looking. I think it's a really, really cool knife. And it's budget friendly. These things currently retail as of mid late 2023, $79.98 US dollars. However, you can get them around the $55 range. Home run, home run of a knife. I've been very, very impressed with the knife CJRB has been coming out with as far as budget friendly EDC slash tactical blades are concerned. Overall length is 8.3 inches. The blade length itself is 3.5. The actual cutting edge is 3.1, and its thickness is 0.12 inches. And again, AR RPM steel. Handle length, 4.8 inches. Its width is 1.12 inches, and its thickness, 0.55 inches. Again, G10 handle scales, stainless steel liners. Weighs 4.9 ounces. Let's just double check that real quick. 5.02 ounces, eh, around 5 ounces. So these days in the 2020s, we have quite a few options for everyday carry folders. There's a lot of great knives coming out there for price ranges just like this, if not cheaper. Certainly a lot more better options than we used to have 20 years ago. Out of all the knives out there, why would I pick this one? First of all, I think it looks great. It is a sexy, sexy, cool looking blade. I love its shape. I love the colors. It's very comfortable. Ergonomics are good. We got jimping up here if you're into that, although we'll talk about it. It's a liner lock. Yeah, nothing too special about that. Personally, I would prefer if this was an Axis style folder, but they went with a liner lock. Carries great. Very simple. Good pocket clip right there. It's tip up. A lot of people are into that. And it's loop over. Double check. Great job. I like this lanyard hole, by the way. I like it when knife companies do something different with the design of the lanyard hole rather than just making it a simple circle. And I think it's cool how it mimics the overall design of the knife. It's that rhombus shape. It's overall cant. It just it fits the style of this knife. Look really cool. And again, speaking of style, love this backspacer. It's, it's just a cool looking blade without being too ridiculous or weird or too extreme. Really smooth deployment. It's on ball bearings. So there's no introduction needed there. It's extremely smooth, not assisted. It is completely manual. So you can open it conventional if you wish. But when I'm opening it quickly, I just use the flipper right there. Very simple. Works very well. Works every single time. The flipper is jimped. Don't know how much it really helps. My finger more just hits this point right here where the, the jimps, if you will, the jimping does not matter, but people would be complaining probably if it wasn't there. So I see why knife companies just do that. Red ring we have around the pivot screws. It's like they didn't need to do that, but it just looks sweet. Most likely it's aluminum. Same as this backspacer down here. I, I love it when there's reflection of knife design. Like there's a pattern. It looks very proprietary. It looks like everything's actually intended for itself. They didn't just slap random hardware on this thing. To me, it just actually looks like it was designed to look a certain way. I like the pattern we have in the G10 down here on the angle. These striations that angle outwards. That, that's a really, really nice touch. And then we have a different pattern, a, a standard G10 pattern up here. Medium traction. You no, know, they got the whole spider coat tenacious thing going on. Very good. Right in that sweet spot. The jumping on the spine is kind of smooth, actually. It's a little bit rounded. You can see those rounded bumps. Eh. It's not terrific. It, it's certainly better than not having it. It would be a lot slipperier without it. But it, it's not as sharp as like a spider co or something. It's just right in the middle. AR or PM9 steel. From briefly researching it, you'll find it performs somewhere between D2 and 14C28N. Or even you could say AUS8. Good edge retention. Not terribly difficult to resharpen. Very good Rust and corrosion resistance, as far as I know. For 55 bucks, even $60, it's a great steal. If anything, I'd prefer it over AUS 8. So as far as middle range knives goes, budget friendly stuff, again, $50 range, totally, totally adequate. Great blade steel for the money. D2 is very popular these days as well. It's been for a while now, but yeah, as far as these budget knives go, it's seeing itself in a lot of other folders. And for a good reason, it's very, very good edge retention for the money. But it has a couple other issues some people don't like about it. It's a bit brittle, can be a little bit difficult to resharpen. Its corrosion resistance is not fantastic. Still a great blade still, but if you want it to just be a little bit easier to resharpen, you want something just a little bit more corrosion and rust resistant, this is a great compromise, the AR RPM9. I'm very impressed with it for the money. 
little bit on the heavier side. Yeah, big, big old wide blade right here. That's certainly going to contribute to it. G10 is not the lightest material out there. And the handles are skeletonized, not like super aggressively, but we have some nice little rhombuses, rhombi in there, which a nice little attention to detail that mimics the design of the knife, I think. Not that you're going to be really looking at those, but five ounces, I, I don't care about weight that much. Yeah, it's on the heavier side, but whatever. Handle thickness, I think, is right in the sweet spot for me. I don't want a knife to be too slim, generally speaking, but I don't want them so thick I can barely get a grip on them. This is perfect. Oh, I, I just keep geeking out about the way it looks, man. I love the way this knife looks. Really, really stylistic. Not just the colors, but the shape of it. I like how we have the whole Santoku thing going on with a big old wide broad blade and a skinny handle. So we hold on to it, we can almost make that blade go flush with whatever surface we're attempting to chop or make contact with. I like this design, it just looks cool. It actuates the blade. This thumb hole right here, I prefer a circle because the problem with any shape other than a circle, typically as you move it, the tip of your thumb's grip changes. So it becomes comfortable and then not quite as comfortable and then you can sometimes kind of slip. It's really not a big deal. That's just me nitpicking at this point. But if it's not a circle, it's, I don't know, they always feel kind of goofy to open up. Thumb studs would have been pretty nice in this knife too, I don't mind, but overall I usually prefer thumb holes over studs and in this case, yeah, I prefer them. Flicking it out with the thumb hole is not easy at all, actually, it, it, it's painful. My thumb and thumbnail get jammed up in this corner when I attempt to flick it, but that's what we got the flipper for. So if you wanna open this quickly, use the flipper, works every single time, extremely smooth. And if you want to open it up conventionally, you use the thumb hole. There you go, problem solved. However, I do consider it a flipper knife. The thumb hole just happens to be a bonus. So good job on that. I do like it when knife companies do that as well, have both options. Best of both worlds, everybody wins. So for this price point, this knife is fantastic. If you like the way it looks and you can afford it, and you're just looking for an everyday carry slash tactical blade, run and take this one, my friend, get two of them. They offer this one in the blue as well. So we have options for colors. It's so comfortable, it's so simple, it works so well. I have no obvious complaints with this thing whatsoever. Carries just like that, you can bite your thumb down right there. It's the perfect thickness. It doesn't feel featherweight light or anything, but it's not a brick of steel or anything. It's not super heavy. I love this blade shape. Piercing's gonna be okay. Uh, not fantastic, obviously. We have somewhat of a more obtuse angle. It's not technically obtuse. It's still IQ because it's less than 90 degrees, but if your blade is literally obtuse, you have a very interesting blade there, um, but it's a very strong blade. Will not chip or break on you too easily. Tip won't snap too easily. Love the design. I like this little cutout they have right here. It's just so cool looking. It's so simple to it. I like this big old black flat finish. I haven't had any issues with it wearing yet, although I didn't do super hard work with this thing. And of course, as you'd expect, you can choke up here. This little indentation we have on the spine of the blade helps with that as well really helps us get extra control carries great it's tip up it's completely ambidextrous unless you don't think liner locks are ambidextrous and i guess it's not but everything else is home run price point here too i like this shape of knife i'm very partial to it i happen to like this look right here it may not be everybody's bag it's a bit stylistic but as far as its ergos and overall function performance go it's very very versatile Big enough, too. We have a quite a long handle to cutting edge ratio. If we're talking about the total distance we have of the knife that is not the cutting edge. Yeah, it's not the most efficient. We only have 3.1 inches of cutting edge here, but the rest is all just ergonomics and control. I really like that, too. It keeps the blade nice and legal for some areas that don't allow giant blades for whatever reason. So even as a tactical blade, I still say it's very good for that. In a defensive tactical situation, it's mostly going to be about reach. So even if the edge is somewhat shorter, as long as you have a long handle, a lot of reach with that blade, it may not matter too much. Really, really awesome knife. It's, it's just a 10 out of 10 for the price range. I absolutely love it. I'm really impressed with it. Great job, Artisan Cutlery. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe. Hit that little bell notification if you do not want to miss weekly knife and gun gear videos. And feel free to support me on Patreon. Link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Manix out.